Hello everyone, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Mike, this is my whiteboard, and today we're gonna to be talking about the relationship between theta and vega. So a few days ago, we talked about the synergistic relationship between put options when we were looking at the delta and vega. And today we're going to break down the theta and vega relationship and what we really are looking at from an options seller's perspective. So we're gonna break down theta, we're gonna do a quick recap of that, we're gonna break down vega and a quick recap of that. Then we're gonna look at the research that we've shown and we're gonna just have some key takeaways and some things to be very mindful of when we're opening trades. So let's break it down first with theta and we'll get a quick recap of theta for you. So when we're looking at theta, we're just looking at the theoretical option decay over one day, all else equal. And I've got a few terms and words in here. So the very first one I want to point out is theoretical. Theta is a metric that we can look at and having a larger theta number when we're selling premium is definitely better, but it's hard to look at it as a realistic number that we should expect to see come down in our options price. So if I'm looking at an option and I have a theta value of negative five and I'm looking at a long call and let's say it's worth $3. Over the passage of one day, if I held, held everything else equal, which is price movement and volatility, anything that can change the market price and anything, any other aspect in that market, if I held everything constant and froze it all and one day passed, if I had a negative 5.0 theta, I should see my option price decrease by $5 or five cents in the options trading world. So if I had one long call that was worth $3 and one day passed, with a theta value of negative five, again, if we have long options where we're purchasing them, theta decay is going to be shown as a negative number because it hurts us, and vice versa for selling options where theta would be a positive number. But if I've got one passing day and theta is negative five, and I held everything else equal, I should see my value of the call decrease by five cents or five dollars. Now, one interesting thing that I wanted to point out is that theta is actually expressed in a dollar form. So as opposed to the cent form in the regular option, so here we're looking at $3, but in reality it's worth $300. When you look at theta on the platform, it's going to say $5 or negative $5 in this example. Even though it's only decreasing our value by five cents, you might think that it would say negative five cents, but with theta specifically, it actually looks at that holistic value. So here you would see a theta value of negative five. And again, theta is positive for option sellers. So if I was selling this call, I would see the theta value be positive. And in this example, it would be positive five because if the option is decaying and I sold it at $3, and now it's worth 295, that gives me the benefit to, and the ability to purchase that call back for a lower price, which would result in profit. So for that reason, theta is going to be positive for option sellers and negative for option buyers. So the key here is that theta changes over a specific set of changes in the market. And there's a few things that can change theta, but we're gonna compare that side by side with Vega in a few slides. But first, let's talk about Vega, and we'll review exactly what we're looking for and what changes Vega, and what happens when Vega affects an options price. So when we're looking at Vega, we're really just looking at the rate of change of an options price, giving, given a 1% move in volatility. So here's another example where I've got that call that's worth $3 and I'm long that call. If implied volatility decreased by 1% and now my value of my call is $2.80, this would tell me that my Vega value is 20 or 0 0.20. I know this and I know that it's a positive number because when I'm long options, I'm going to have a positive vega. And when I'm short options, I'm going to have a negative vega. So if I have a positive vega, and I actually want implied volatility to increase, with an increase in implied volatility, my positive vega would positively affect my option. If I have a positive vega number and volatility decreases, then that would mean that my option is now worth less, which is, of course, bad for me if I'm an option buyer. So with this example specifically, I quickly know that my Vega value would be 0.20 or 20. 
Now, when we look at Vega and we, when we consider Vega with our options trading, when you're looking at short options, we view Vega as a risk. So when we're looking at the theta to Vega ratio and keeping that ratio high, which is the goal, we're going to be viewing Vega as risk. Now let's talk about why that is. Well, although Vega is definitely good for us if it decreases, if it decreases the option, or when we're looking for selling options, we want to sell it in a high implied volatility environment, and we want that implied volatility to contract. Because at the end of the day, implied volatility is just a reflection of the options prices. So if implied volatility is contracting, so should those option prices. So if I sold them up here and I'm able to buy it back at a lower price, that's going to be great for me and allow me to hopefully capture that profit by closing the trade. But what happens with implied volatility? If we just think of the nature of implied volatility, and where it, it, what side it explodes to, then we can start to see why we see Vega as a risk when we're short options or we're selling options as a strategy. So when implied volatility moves and when it explodes, it explodes to the upside. If we talk about the relationship between markets and implied volatility, usually implied volatility will see explosions or drastic moves to the upside after or during an, a market or underlying is decreasing rapidly in price. When an underlying is decreasing rapidly in price, and we've shown that there's been a pretty negative correlation with price and implied volatility, in other words, when price comes down, we tend to see implied volatility come up. When price is moving down, and if we can agree that volatility in terms of price is to the downside, and that velocity is to the downside, then that must mean that the velocity in terms of implied volatility would be to the upside. So if I'm selling options and Vega is going to be a negative number for me, which means that if implied volatility is increasing, that's going to be bad because my options are going to gain value, then that's where the risk is really perceived. Because I, if I know that with the underlying price movement, if the velocity is to the downside, and implied volatility has a negative correlation to that, that would mean that implied volatility tends to have the velocity to the upside. So if I'm short Vega and implied volatility explodes to the upside, that's going to hurt me. So when we're looking at the theta and Vega relationship or the theta and Vega ratio, we're going to want to keep that theta high relative to the Vega risk that we're taking on. So that's where that theta to Vega ratio or TV ratio comes into play. So let's go on to the next slide and we'll talk about some things that change these Greeks. So when we're looking at theta specifically, if we add time to an option, we tend to see theta actually decrease. Now there's an important thing to talk about with that statement specifically. Now, when I add time, of course, the option is going to be worth more itself. So don't get me wrong, the option should be worth more as we add time, and it will be. But the more time we add to that option's price, the more opportunity that option has to decay over time. So if we have a shorter time frame, the option has to decay pretty rapidly because of the fact that it has to reach zero or the extrinsic value of that option has to reach zero by expiration. But if we have an option that has 180 days to go, that option can very slowly decay over time. And for that reason, we generally see theta go down when we add time. When we're looking at Vega in terms of the time though, when we add time, we're looking at an increase in Vega. And that's because of the fact that when we add time, we're adding value to that option. So Vega is going to be affected much more by changes in implied volatility, or I should say that option is going to be affected more by changes in that applied volatility. And we've shown in the past that the farther out we go, the more sensitive that option is going to be in terms of changes in implied volatility. So therefore, the Vega should increase when we add time. But now let's talk about implied volatility here. So when we're looking at increasing implied volatility, if we can agree that when we increase implied volatility, it's really just a reflection of the option prices increasing, then that must mean that theta would increase. And that is true, because if we're holding that time frame constant, let's say we have 45 days to go, 
and an option's worth $5. It's going to decay over time at a specific rate. But if implied volatility has increased, which means that that option price is increasing as well, let's say that option price is now worth $7. In that same time frame of 45 days, now the option has to decay, if we're looking at an out of the money option, it has to decay that full value as long as it stays out of the money of $7 as opposed to five. So for that reason, there's more premium that needs to decay over a specific amount of time. So for that reason, theta would increase with an implied volatility increase. And when we're looking at out of the money options in Vega, when we increase implied volatility, we generally see that Vega value increase. The Vega value is going to be highest with at the money options, but since that's sort of the benchmark, we don't really see Vega increase too drastically with implied volatility movements. But when you look at the wings of that Vega, when we increase implied volatility, you usually see the outskirts or the out of the money options increase in Vega as well. So what are our key findings? What are some things that really play into this and what are we looking for when we're trading options? So the first thing I wanna talk about is the theta to vega ratio. And finding that ratio is very simple. All we're doing is taking what we perceive as a benefit to us, which is theta, and we're dividing theta by our risk, in this case, which is vega. So we're taking theta, we're dividing it by our vega value, and we're multiplying that by 100 to find our theta to vega ratio. So on the next slide here, I've summarized a few things that we've looked at based on our research. So the very first thing is the day till expiration window. So I was looking at a bunch of different research. We've got a lot of great segments that we've done, specifically market measures. So if you wanna see, see more about these and see the math behind it, definitely check out some of the market measure segments. You can literally just click on the magnifying glass in the upper right corner of Tastytrade and just type in theta vega or theta vega ratio and you'll see a bunch of segments there. But what we found is that the 45 day till expiration window usually yields optimal theta to vega ratios. It gives us the highest theta relative to vega risk. So we looked at the 45 days till expiration window, and when we had a higher implied volatility environment, yes, that should increase both of those Greek metrics, but usually the implied volatility is going to increase that theta value much more than that vega value. So you might see a 10% increase in vega, but you could see theta double. So for that reason, in this specific time frame, we're looking to keep those options in that 45 day till expiration window, which is just another reason why we find that window optimal. When we have higher TV or theta to vega ratios, we did show that we can have higher win rates because we're collecting more of that benefit or theta relative to the risk that we're taking in vega. So the higher that ratio is, the bigger the disparity between the theta, which we want to be very big, and that vega, which is what we perceive as risk with short options. We can also see a higher P&L per trade. So in those market measures, you'll see different comparisons over different theta to vega ratios. And it gives us a higher P&L per trade when we get to this benchmark ratio here. And we definitely saw substantial P&L improvements. We did actually show that if we've got theta to vega ratio that's too small, where theta isn't large enough relative to the risks that we're taking, there are some situ situations where we could see a negative P&L. But when we reached this benchmark, where our TV ratio was 0.20 or 20% if you multiply that by 100, we're looking at that as our benchmark. The 0.20 ratio yielded the highest P&L per trade and it gave us substantial P&L improvements. When we went above that, we went closer to 0 0.30, which is usually, it's usually gonna happen in the highest of implied volatility environments. That gave us a higher win rate, but this 0 0.20 gave us the highest PNL. So depending on what you're looking at and what you deem is successful, anything above 20% is going to be optimal for us. So let's wrap this all together with some takeaways for you. The very first takeaway is that theta and vega are both affected by time, but in different ways. So we all know that adding time to an option will increase its value, but increasing that value and spreading that value out over more days usually decreases theta, although vega will be, it'll make that option much more sensitive to changes in implied volatility. 
Secondly, paying attention to our Greeks relationships makes us more efficient traders. So we can take theta by itself and understand that. And we can take vega by itself and understand that. But once we start to mesh them together and really see the relationships between the two, we can start to create even more dynamic and more, more successful ways to take these Greeks and create different mechanics. So now knowing the theta to vega relationship, I'm always gonna be looking at making sure that that ratio is above 0.20 or 20%. So here I've got it listed again, 20% was optimal. It gave us substantial PNL increases. The higher the better because that just means we're taking on much more theta relative to our vega risk, but anything above 20% is what we're looking for. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed this segment. If you've got any feedback at all, shoot me an email here, or you can follow me at DoTraderMike on Twitter. Stay tuned though, we've got Jim Schultz coming up next. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our video. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up or share it with a friend. Click below to watch more videos, subscribe to our channel, or go to our website.